Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Lab Padre's Starbase Weekly Updates. Now let's dig in. To start off, Thursday morning saw some cribbing being delivered to the launch site. Cribbing is used to distribute the weight of a crane during a lift. Later that day, the QD arm swung outward, making room for the chopsticks to climb the tower. Once at the top, the chopstick swung to the far side of the tower, and the QD arm swung back in. That same afternoon, crews also began disassembling the hydraulic gantry, which was used to lower the can crusher to the ground. After having arrived the day before, it accomplished its task and it was time to go. After the two header beams were removed, the four hydraulic towers were rotated down into their traveling configuration. As crews worked on disassembling the gantry, Ship 20 began making its move away from the launch tower. After navigating around the busy launch complex, S-20 was parked near Test Stand B. Later that night, crews were observed working on Booster 7's quick disconnect. The metal cover was removed to allow workers to access the inner plumbing of the QD. Overnight, crews worked on the QD arm and the attached work platforms could be seen retracting. Once the work was completed, the QD arm was once again swung out away from the tower. In the early hours the following morning, Ship 24's nose cone was seen exiting Tent 3 and being lifted onto a new stand. Meanwhile, in High Bay, Ship 24's tank and aft sections, having been welded together, were removed from the turntable and placed on a stand. Later in the morning, this section exited High Bay and was rolled over to Mid Bay, freeing up some more space in the busy High Bay. At that same time, at the launch site, SpaceX's LR-11000 crane Marvin was connected to B-7. With Marvin connected and B-7 depressurized, the booster QD on the launch mount was retracted and the protective hood lowered. With Marvin resting on the cribbing that arrived the day before, everything was ready for B-7's next move. Bypassing the transport stand, the crane picked up the booster, rotated toward the can crusher, then crawled forward, giving us a good look at all the Raptor connections underneath. Finally, B-7 was lowered to the can crusher. Later that afternoon, the chopsticks underwent some additional testing, rotating back and forth several times over the course of about an hour, and then the QD arm was returned to its resting position, hugging the tower. With space now available, Ship 24's nose cone was moved from over by the windbreak and rolled down Highway 4 to the high bay. Hours later, S-24's nose cone barrel also rolled to high bay in preparation for the two sections being stacked and welded together. The next morning, with the booster secure on the can crusher, Marvin's load spreader was disconnected from B-7. That night, the QD arm moved away from the tower, the chopsticks lowered back to the base of the tower, and the QD arm was rotated back in. After a relatively slow and windy weekend, the road was closed Tuesday. During pad clearing, venting was seen from B7 on the can crusher. Once the pad was clear, an alarm was heard from the launch site as a final warning prior to testing operations. After an afternoon with lots of farm activity, but not a lot of visible action on the booster, B-7 was depressurized from several vents at once. At Port Canaveral, following its return from the historic Axiom-1 launch, B-1062 was moved from the drone ship to the dock, its legs folded up and then lifted to the transporter. Wednesday saw the second day of booster testing at Starbase. After a later start, the testing seemed to follow a similar pattern with lots of farm activity but little to be seen on the booster. As the testing was wrapping up, we saw again large depressed vents from B-7. Early Thursday, SpaceX started a tank section shuffle. First, B-8's completed methane tank rolled out of the high bay. Next, B-8's partial LOX tank was moved out of mid-bay and parked next to the methane tank nearby. That didn't last long though, as the methane tank section was quickly rolled into the newly vacated space in mid-bay. 
completing the shuffle for the morning, B-8's partial LOX tank section was rolled into high bay where crews could finish working to stack it. Later, Ship 24's nose cone, now welded to the nose cone barrel, was relocated to the corner of high bay. Later that afternoon, with the road closed for the third straight day, Booster 7 was again undergoing testing at the launch site. This time, however, SpaceX was visibly loading cryogenic liquids into the booster. Frost was seen forming on both tanks as they were filled with supercooled fluids. And there you have it, another Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Make sure you subscribe and hit the alert bell for new video and live stream notifications. We'll see you next week, and thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.